All right, let's uh, see what's on the bench today. Uh, obviously some big PC boards. Um, I was cleaning out a drawer in the garage that I have a bunch of PC boards stash in and I was moving it to another location to free up some space and try to reorganize in, in the process to figure out what I have and what I can get rid of. Um, and I ran across these and I thought this would be of some interest to you guys. These are from the way back days of Hewlett Packard. Um, in particular, the Hewlett Packard uh, Optoelectronics Division and Optical Communications Division. Um, and uh, these were mostly used in house for prototyping things or building one off test equipment. Like you needed a little thing, they would come to the group I was in and they'd say, Could you design us a thing to test these little widgets? We want to test their whether they're too high or too low voltage and we need to have a, you know, and we would build them a fixture. We had a, uh, electrical engineers, software engineers, mechanical engineers, and we had a machine shop all in one group that could build these things to be used internally. And these, uh, we, and we had a stock room. So we had a stock room with all of the Hewlett Packard parts in it. And, uh, and we had free access to all of that stuff, which was really nice. Even part of the machine shop they had carved off for us engineers. Uh, they had a one lathe and one milling machine, one press, one brake. Anyway, uh, there, there was one little area where we could break those things and they wouldn't get upset. Um, so that was nice. But these are uh, prototype boards of various types. Now this one is interesting. Um, it's obviously got a big edge connector on it, and uh, it does, uh, yeah, 1 through 99, interesting. But take a look at the, uh, can you see, take a look at the hole pattern here. On this side, it's, all the holes have an interleaf ground on them, and on this side, it's just, just the hole itself. So um, these were probably for wire wrap, if I had to guess. Um, I don't think it'd be easy to solder on here without bridging over to the uh, uh, the interleafed ground. So these are probably uh, wire wrap days. There's a Hewlett Packard part number on it. Uh, 5080-2958. Um, CPD. Oh, who was CPD? That's the name of the group this was made for. Oh, I can't remember. Uh, HP Computer Peripherals Division CPD? I don't remember. I don't remember what this was out of. Okay, so anyway, that was that was interesting. Um, big big card connectors were seemed to be all the rage back then. All right, uh, so that's that one. Uh, here's one that's quite similar. Um, this one has two edge connectors, probably one for the back plane and one for going off for cabling assemblies and something like that. This one says HP uh, GCI? I don't even know that one either. This one has an HP part number, 5080-2901. Uh, is that the same as, let's see, what was this one? 2958, this is 2901, okay. Um, it has uh, power and ground kind of stripes running around the outsides. And once again, uh, it's just, uh, this one probably is for either wire wrap or soldering. The pads are much bigger and it doesn't, it doesn't have an interleaf ground. Interestingly, they, they chose a square pad. I don't know why, but uh, that's what, that's what this one is. Uh, yeah. Interesting. All right. Uh, then the next board I have, uh, I actually recognize this board. So that group that I talked about that I was in, this came out of that group. And uh, this was a piece of test equipment that was designed before I got there. And it was being replaced. When I joined uh, that group, they were phasing out the box that held these cards and they were moving to a different one uh, that had a little more capability. Um, but yeah, this is for the old one. And uh, this is pretty typical HP prototyping boards. Obviously there's uh, power and grounds being routed in and then locations, uh, locations for bypassing. So if you put a capacitor there, that bypasses VCC to ground. And then these are on uh, uh, 
0.3 centers. So you could populate this with normal TTL or square uh, uh, analog type parts. But yeah, I like this board. These, this is quite useful. Um, oftentimes this board got chopped up because uh, it was a nice board, but you didn't need such a big thing. So you just chop a piece out of it, go over, go over to the bandsaw or something and chop a piece out of it and use it for your project. Um, so these were quite a few of these laying around for that purpose. Everything's gold plated, of course. Uh, this is an interesting one. Uh, I don't even remember when I was pulling things out of my drawer. I didn't even remember having this one and I don't know <clears throat> any history about it. <coughs> uh, this one has a little marking here, plus or minus 15 and plus or minus 12 here. So, uh, obviously for some type of analog thing and uh, ground is marked 100 pin connector um, yeah interesting uh, really good shielding if you wanted a nice ground plane underneath your analog circuitry uh, to keep the noise down uh, that's what that was going on here and then they gave you a little bit of prototyping area here if it, if it didn't fit this particular size you could go over to here to do a little bit more stuff uh so yeah that one's that one's interesting and i, I really never had seen this one before <laughs> even before today <laughs> i just sort of found it uh okay and then this one which i've always been fascinated with i'm not sure what this went in and why it looks the way it looks it's very odd this is a 5080-2971 extended length series 200 breadboard Series 200, that doesn't ring a bell either, 1996. Hmm, Series 200 breadboard, I don't know, I don't know. Maybe somebody knows what a, the Series 200 was. I don't know, this is out of a mini mini mainframe or something. I don't, I don't know what this is. But look at the weird hole pattern. This doesn't make any sense to me. It's obviously a wire wrap board. It has interleaf grounds. And, uh, yeah, it's just a really weird pattern. I don't know why they would have, would have designed it that way. It's very bizarre. But it made sense to somebody at the time. <laughs> they said, this is the way that I want it. Make this. Uh, so, yeah, very interesting board. And uh, solder mask. If you notice, none of the other ones had solder mask on them. Typically, the bread prototyping boards never had solder mask on them, so you could do all kinds of crazy stuff, and the solder mask wouldn't get in the way. But this one, this one, they wanted solder mask, even though it probably wasn't soldered. Maybe, maybe it was. Maybe, maybe that's. I don't know. Maybe they soldered this thing, but it's really, really hard to see. If you're going to solder something, these make a lot of these make a lot of sense, right? Because you could put the part down, you could solder to it, and then there's a, some some places over where you could solder wires and stuff too. But if you only have one hole to attach two or three wires, it just is super hard to do. I, I was never a never a big fan of proto boards that were just single points. Uh, they're hard to hard to deal with. Well, anyway. That's the video for the day. Lots of weird old HP stuff. Um, probably, probably $5 worth of gold there, right? I don't know. <laughs>